I love Batman. I dressed up as him all throughout my childhood. I love the Nolan movies, the animated series, and my most viewed video is just me essentially gushing about how badass he is in the video games. I as well loved Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson's take on the character. To see aspects of the comics such as the opening Miller-esque dialogue from Bruce that sounded as if pulled straight from the pages of Batman Year One, the nature of Bruce's parentage and his relationship with Alfred borrowed from Batman Earth One, the gritty rain-soaked version of Gotham that's so dark and oppressive that it feels more like an alien planet rather than Chicago or New York, a twisted and corrupt madhouse that could plausibly churn out insane super criminal after super criminal. All of these aspects from the source material had never been put to film with such earnesty or passion. And being someone who's been reading, watching, and playing games about this character for my entire life, it was nothing short of cathartic to watch a movie that felt so much like an essential run from the character's near century long publication history. But even aside from all of that, the elements in the film that moved me the most, moved me to tears, were the moments that pierced straight to the core of Bruce Wayne as a character. This version of Bruce Wayne is a man who, due to the trauma he had endured, had become a blind and unyielding instrument of rage. Not but towards the climax of the film is he really even Batman. I think he's called that maybe twice throughout the nearly three hour runtime. No, he is known as Vengeance. Vengeance is all that drives him. Another example of the writers and directors and actors' deep understanding of the traits that the comic book fans have known for decades, Batman for the bulk of this movie is still that little boy in an alley arched over the bloody bodies of his mother and father. He is stuck, entrapped by that single crystallized moment of all-consuming anger. He has been fueled by this anger for years, and it's at a very key moment that Bruce Wayne finds himself staring down that alleyway yet again. Appearing on the scene of the Riddler's first kill, he finds a sad and lonely boy, who, due to someone inspired by Batman's own blood-soaked crusade, has had his father taken from him. The inciting incident of the movie's plot sees Batman in a recreation of Crime Alley, reunited with his own grief and trauma that he's attempted to master and bury inside of himself for his entire life since. The next time Batman sees this boy, it's as Bruce Wayne, a side of himself that he has made no attempt to maintain. He is vengeance, after all. There is no place for Bruce Wayne. We see this Bruce compelled to listen in and participate beside Jim Gordon, most likely the only living person in his entire life that he openly reveres at this point in the movie, but he can't. Bruce Wayne is a ghost, a hollow and traitless entity that is merely a formality in the life of the Batman. Nonetheless, when this young reflection of Bruce's past is nearly killed, it's Bruce Wayne who comes to the rescue. No body armor nor disguise, Bruce throws aside any hesitation and saves this echo of his own trauma. This goes to show that this Batman exists, Bruce's drive to defend the innocent and punish the guilty exists, all as a tool for Bruce to save and protect himself, to protect himself from the fear and pain that hasn't left him since he was a child. And finally, by the film's conclusion, by the time that Bruce realizes that Batman's thirst for vengeance only makes him more alike the murderers and killers of Gotham, the first person to embrace his reformation is that young boy. Bruce Wayne realizes that to truly save himself, to redeem the lost and alone child within, he must fight to save and protect the innocent rather than solely existing to punish the guilty. Not fear, nor vengeance but hope. Another defining moment on this Bruce's journey to become more is when Alfred's life is nearly taken, again due to the Riddler. Another example of Batman's current quest only going as far as to hurt the ones nearest to him. Vengeance creates the vengeful, and the vengeful create more orphaned boys, and would have continued to take more of Bruce's family from him. This close call, the realization that the thing that Batman still fears more than anything else is once again being left standing alone due to the hands of crime. Themes like this, moments like this that inspired such an emotional reaction from me, 
is why I believe the Batman needs Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson, as many have pointed out, may be Batman's greatest success, and I believe that if his story were to be integrated and adapted into this version of the Batman mythos, it would be an invaluable story to be added to the annals of comic book film history. Bruce seeing a reflection of his own grief, having someone who can at the same time know Bruce Wayne as well as Batman, someone who Batman would have a constant fear of losing, and thus fostering someone who decides to use their loss and turn it into a tool of hope. All of these qualities that elevated the Batman film to such levels of emotional resonance are embodied in the first Robin. Dick Grayson could have been another Batman. He could have been the Batman that we see throughout most of this movie's runtime. Another vengeful shadow, only seeking to, as Falcone states it in the movie, put the fear of God into the cowardly and superstitious lot that took his family from him. But thankfully, Bruce Wayne was there, an emotionally mature Bruce Wayne who, like the Batman seen at this film's ending, had learned the hard way that rage was no way to treat your pain. Through teaching this similar soul as well touched by the pain of loss, he was able to prevent Grayson from wasting the same years he spent blindly expressing his obsession and anger on the criminal element. Dick Grayson shares the absolute and defining trait that sits at the core of Bruce Wayne himself. He wants vengeance on the criminal who murdered his parents. The Batman keeps the nature of the Wayne's deaths ambiguous. This version of Bruce Wayne will likely never know who did it, who set him down this path. But to see this interpretation specifically come once again face to face with a mirror image of his own youth and to give him what he was never able to achieve himself, closure. To aid the young boy in bringing the men who murdered his parents to justice would be a perfect extension of the themes presented in The Batman. I feel this way as well about introducing someone who knows the ins and outs of Bruce Wayne, someone who knows the man behind the mask, a person who shares in that grief and that experience of staring into the abyss and having it stare back. It would be a relief to this Bruce to have someone who understands exactly what drives him, someone who he doesn't have to hide from or have his split persona separate their camaraderie such as it does with Jim Gordon. Having a Robin added to the fray would as well provide this Batman with ample amounts of tension. Dick Grayson was someone who was just as motivated to seek justice as was Bruce Wayne. Bruce couldn't stop him if he tried. Batman's only choice was to train him, give him the tools to succeed. But in spite of that, there have been many close calls throughout Dick Grayson's career as Robin. He nearly died at the hands of Two-Face as well as the Joker, with the latter event being what initially drove Bruce to bench Grayson from the superhero game entirely in the original version of that story. After nearly losing Alfred in this movie and seeing the lengths that this Bruce Wayne would go to protect a youthful reflection of himself, having a sidekick, a son or brother in arms fighting crime alongside him, would go a long way in enhancing the theme of fear of loss established to be at the core of Pattinson's Batman. But most of all, and why this version of Robin I believe needs to be Dick Grayson specifically, is marked by this Batman's ultimate decision to become a symbol of hope, an element lifted straight from Batman ego. See, despite having an assortment of sidekicks and adopted sons over the years, none of them have quite as consistently been depicted as such a symbol as the hero known as Nightwing. Jason Todd is Batman's greatest failure. Because of his upbringing and death, Jason has always felt removed and at times at odds with the rest of his family. Tim Drake has seen what he might grow to become in the future if he were to follow in Bruce's image, a gun-toting killer taking out each and every member of his rogues gallery. Damien has been prophesied many times as being a Batman who will see Gotham burnt to ashes. All of these characters have sort of a dark portent or nature hanging over their heads that isn't really associated with Nightwing, at least in the main continuity. And that isn't to say that none of the other Robins or protégés of Batman can't and haven't as well inspired hope, but Batman himself has noted that Nightwing is a clearer version of what Batman was always meant to be, 
which sets Grayson apart from each and every one of his other protégés. And when applied to this version of the character, Grayson can become that ultimate symbol of hope, someone who, thanks to Batman, would never become as gripped by the call to revenge as he was. Someone who, thanks to Bruce's efforts, could truly move past that identical trauma. Because of the lessons learned and passed on through Bruce's own failings, Grayson could build real relationships. He would have a particular understanding of people and their emotions that the closed off and reserved Bruce Wayne could never have. It's the goal of any past generation to use what they had learned through their own mistakes, passing on the best parts of themselves, while at the same time preventing their own woes to be repeated into the future. If that isn't a powerful message of Batman being able to create hope out of pain, a hero, a clearer version of himself in Nightwing, then I don't know what is. And not only that, but considering the fact that when coupled with the film's box office earnings, as well as multiple HBO Max shows already in development, it's highly likely that we have a franchise on our hands. And looking to the most successful comic book franchise to date, the MCU, despite its faults, we've all seen the power of watching our heroes grow and evolve as real time passes. And while comic book characters always find their way back to their status quo, one who has perhaps managed to evolve the most over the longest period of time is Dick Grayson. Appearing in comics only one year after Batman himself, Richard has been around for nearly 100 years. In that time, he's gone from Batman's ward to leader of the Teen Titans to Nightwing to a member of the Justice League at various points and even becoming Batman himself multiple times. He's had many relationships, a couple of close calls to marriage, and he's become a millionaire, he's been a cop, he's lived in Gotham, Bloodhaven, New York, and again, he may be the highest profile comic character to actually change consistently. The potential to have even a measure of this growth depicted on screen is something I think anyone can get behind. Both Robert Pattinson, as well as the Batman director and co-writer Matt Reeves, have actually said that they do believe they should try to bring a comic accurate 13 year old Robin into their universe with Pattinson specifically citing Death in the Family. And while that is a great and seminal story and would add a ton of depth to this version of the Batman universe, I think much more would be lost than gained if those involved decided to skip over Grayson's career as the Boy Wonder or, for some reason, kill him off like Zack Snyder did, for reasons that I hopefully convinced you throughout this video. 